you may find it hard to believe, but these two inequalities, this one and this one, are actually the same exact set. Whenever you have an intersection, you can easily rewrite it so it has this nice compact format. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's take a look at the first example. We have the compound inequality x is greater than negative 8 intersected with x is less than 7. Let's begin by drawing that graph out. That's what I have here. I have the inequality x is greater than negative 8 and I've done that in green and I have the inequality x is less than 7. <clears throat> that one's done in red. The intersection is the area they have in common and so it's in between those two points, the purple area. Now, how do I go about rewriting this so that it looks like that? All you've got to do is use your number line as your guide. The lowest number is negative 8, so we put negative 8 right here. The highest number is 7, so we put the 7 right there. X is all of the areas that shade it. So the purple area X is in between them, so we put the X in the middle. Now we simply have to put our inequality symbols in. Well, this is an open circle, so it will not be equal to. And notice that the X values, the purple, are bigger than this point here. They're further down the number line off to the right. So x is bigger than negative 8. So the inequality opens toward the x. Now way down here we have the 7. The 7 is way at the end. It's bigger than any of the shaded values. So the 7 is bigger than the x. So we'll put the inequality open toward the 7. And there you have it. Negative 8 is smaller than x and x is smaller than 7 or x is in between negative 8 and 7. The number line is really your guide. Take a look at example 10. We have the compound inequality x is less than 10 intersected with x is greater than or equal to 4. Let's begin by constructing the number line and shading in the appropriate area. Here's the intersection in between 4 and 10. 4 is the small one, 10 is the big one, and the x's are all in the middle. Now all I need to do is put my inequalities in. It's a shaded circle, and so it'll have the equal sign underneath it, and the x's are all bigger than the 4, so we'll put the inequality open toward the x. 10 is bigger than any of the shaded values here, it's way down at the end, and so the inequality will be open toward the 10. And here we have it. This intersection is written in a nice clean format, just like that, with x in between 4 and 10. <clears throat> now, it's important to know that you can only use this when you have an intersection. If you have a union, it doesn't work. The next example is just that. Let's take a look. <clears throat> we have the union x is less than 3 and x is greater than 5. So we shade it in our, our number line in the appropriate places, and that's what it looks like. Now, <clears throat> x is not in between anything. So we can't write the x in between the two numbers. We simply have x is less than 3, x is greater than 5. <clears throat> it's not an intersection. x is not between two numbers. x just happens to be either over here or over there. The last thing I want to show you is that sometimes an intersection is really nothing. Take a look at these two inequalities. We have x is less than 3, x is greater than 5. We want the intersection. Well, I've shaded each one. The intersection is the area they have in common. There is no area in common. In fact, there is no intersection. In this set here, it's actually empty. There's nothing that meets both criteria. And that makes a lot of sense. Think about it. Can you come up with any number that is both less than 3 and greater than 5 at the same time? I can't. So in this case, there is no intersection. There's not much we can do with it. The next page has four examples. I'd like for you to pause the video here. Give those a try. There are four graphs, number lines. See if you can write the set 
using the fancy notation, the simpler notation that I showed you if it's an intersection. And if it's a union, just write it how we always have. Give that a try. Let's see how you did. Example 13, we have an intersection. X is in between negative 5 and 3. So we have negative 5, less than or equal to X, less than or equal to 3. Number 14, X is also in between two points. X is between 1 and 9. 1 is less than X, is less than 9. X is between 1 and 9. <clears throat> Number 15 is not an intersection. We can't write it with our simplified notation, but we can write out the union. That's no problem. X is less than th negative 3, and we have the union. X is greater than 2. And so here's our notation. We can't simplify it at all if it's a union, but we could still write the, the name of the set. Finally, number 16, x is in between negative 8 and 0, and so here's my notation. This is how you can write an intersection using much more simplistic notation when you're working with compound inequalities. We've seen multiple ways you can write sets already. Roster notation, where we just list the elements out as a number line, or even using an inequality. We're going to take a look at one more type of notation today that actually combines all of these into one big package. It's called set builder notation. Set builder notation is actually very simple. All you have to do is write these squiggly braces, an X, and a line. Everything else just goes right there. So really, you're just taking what you would already write and putting this little thing around it. The way we read this is x such that, and then whatever our set is. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of how set builder notation actually works. Suppose you have the set x is greater than or equal to 6. We want to write it in set builder notation. Well, all we have to do is write the x such that with the squiggly braces and put everything else right inside. So this comes right inside, and now we have x such that x is greater than or equal to 6. A lot of mathematicians like set builder notation because it says right out front, this is the variable that we're talking about. The variable is x. Suppose you have this compound inequality. You have a union, x is less than 5, combined with x is greater than or equal to 12. We just take that whole thing and put it right inside our little package. x such that x is less than 5 or x is greater than or equal to 12. So set builder is really just like a box. You're taking what you already have and putting it inside of a new box. Here's a few examples to get you the feel for how set builder actually works. We want the set builder notation for all numbers greater than 2. In other words, x is greater than 2. Well, we'll have our x is greater than 2, and we'll just put the box. The squiggly braces, x such that. x such that x is greater than 2. And I've written it in set builder notation. Number 6 is a little bit different, um, but it's not all that different at all. It says we have this set, and it's written in roster notation. Now, we're going to do just what we always do. We're going to put it inside the box. But you have to have a variable on this side over here. It says here the variable is x. You've got to have an x somewhere over in here. So we'll just say x is an element of that set. x such that x is an element of this set that's written in roster notation. It looks a little confusing, takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's really all we've been doing before, nothing new, inside this nice little package. Let's take a look at some more. There's just a few more examples. We're going to throw some more mathematical symbols, things that you'll want to know in there. Let's take a look at what we have. Oh, we want the set of integers. Well, here we go. The symbol for the integers is this double letter Z. It's used as the German word Zahlen, which means numbers. And that's the symbol that we use for integers. So if we want the set of integers, x such that x is an element of the integers. 
Number eight, we want the integers and numbers greater than or equal to six. That sounds to me like we want an intersection. X such that X is an element of the integers and X is greater than or equal to six. We took the two pieces, put them right inside of the set builder package. Down here, we want the whole numbers and less than 32. So we want whole numbers that are less than 32. The symbol for whole numbers is W. So X such that X is a whole number. X is an element of the whole numbers. And X is less than 32. We've written exactly what we want inside of the set builder package. Now, if you're feeling overwhelmed because we've thrown things in like the symbol for integers and the symbol for whole numbers, don't feel overwhelmed with that. We'll spend a little bit of time actually working with those specifically to get you a little bit more comfortable with being familiar with what the whole numbers are, what the integers are. But I wanted to introduce them here, throwing them into the set builder package. Finally, number 10 and 11, here they say they want the set of numbers that's greater than negative 3 and less than or equal to 5. And means intersect. So I've drawn out the picture. These are the numbers greater than negative 3, less than 5. And I've written out my nice notation here with the intersection. And I've written it right into the set builder package. Doesn't it look great? X such that X is between negative 3 and 5. Same idea over here, except here we have a union. We want numbers less than negative 1 or greater than 3 or means union, and so we have numbers less than negative 1, greater than 3, and I've written it in the set builder package. So set builder notation is often the most intimidating because it looks the fanciest, but really it's nothing that you haven't done before. You're simply taking what you already would write and putting it inside this little package. What you would already write and putting it inside the package. And that's a nice overview of set builder notation and how you can work with that.